The Force Sensitive Anakin Skywalker was raised by the slave Shmi Skywalker on the planet of Tatooine, but was considered to be conceived by midichlorians. At the age of nine, the slave life of Anakin Skywalker branched into a path that would reshape the rest of the galaxy. After the Jedi had rescued Queen Amidala of Naboo from the clutches of the Trade Federation, the Federation's fleet hit back at the Queen's starship, leading to their hyperdrive being damaged and the crash landing on Tatooine. Entering into a nearby settlement of Mos Espa, Jedi Master Qui-Gon Jinn noticed the powerful presence of Anakin, and upon a blood check, he was discovered to have a greater midichlorian count than Jedi Grandmaster Yoda. With Anakin's heroics, the Jedi and Queen Amidala arrive back on Coruscant, where Qui-Gon is adamant that Anakin was the subject of the prophecy of the Chosen One, and despite the initial doubts and a trip to the dark side, the prophecy was fulfilled. But what if there was another? What if Anakin had a twin? As you are about to find out, the existence of another Anakin could have altered the galaxy. Qui-Gon walked down the ramp of the Queen's battered starship, feeling the soft sand beneath his feet. Reluctantly, the Jedi Master allowed Queen Amidala to join him in his quest to find a new hyperdrive, but he was focused on something he had felt as he landed. A great convergence in the Force was here on Tatooine, and Qui-Gon was going to find it. Walking through the clouds of sand, the group entered the spaceport of Mos Espa and found their way to Watto's workshop. Met by the greedy Toydarian himself, Qui-Gon sensed the presence growing closer and closer until he saw Anakin Skywalker, and the Jedi Master sensed that this boy could be the Chosen One. Walking through the shop, however, there was something incomplete about Anakin, as if there was something or someone else on Tatooine. As he negotiated the parts for the Queen's starship, Qui-Gon picked up his comlink and spoke to Obi-Wan, who was back on the ship. The Master ordered his Padawan to try and relay a message to the Jedi Council that Qui-Gon had found Anakin, but there was no signal. Qui-Gon was soon able to obtain Anakin's blood sample, and his midichlorian count was even higher than Master Yoda but he feared that he was too old to be trained. The Jedi Quinlan Vos, who was also stationed on Tatooine, had seen Qui-Gon walking in the streets with young Anakin, and contacted the Jedi Council, who were intrigued, as Qui-Gon already had a Padawan in Obi-Wan. On Coruscant, the Council are curious, and ask Vos to ensure that Anakin is returned to the Jedi Temple, for their assessment on if Anakin could be trained. Elsewhere in the Galactic City, Darth Sidious had obtained the coordinates to Queen Amidala and had given them to Darth Maul, but Palpatine had failed to hear from his apprentice since his arrival on Tatooine. With Chancellor Valorum's leadership starting to wilt under the pressure of the other politicians, Palpatine had to remain on Coruscant, so he chose to reveal his thoughts with his master Plagueis, and the wise Dark Lord of the Sith travelled to Tatooine himself, knowing that Palpatine would soon be able to manipulate his way to the role of Supreme Chancellor. Landing in one of the valleys of sand outside Mos Espa, at last Maul receives his communication. Maul recalls what he had seen concerning Anakin, and Plagueis instructs the Zabrak to focus on the boy, and not the Jedi nor the Queen, as Palpatine had instructed. The two Sith walk into the town with their hoods over their heads, and approaching Watto's workshop, the Toydarian's eyes widen at the sight of the two Sith. As they force choke the dealer, Watto referred them to Shmi Skywalker's home, and they leave Watto slumped over his counter, stealthily darting through the busy streets to the Skywalker home. Plagueis opened the entrance with a small swipe of his hand, and Shmi opened it and was towered by the Sith Lord. Plagueis entered first, and Shmi revealed that Anakin had left with the Jedi, but the Sith Lord sensed Shmi was hiding something. After a number of force chokes, she unveiled the location of another Anakin Skywalker, who was also a capable mechanic and pilot on the other side of the town and in the cantina. With great confidence, Maul led Plagueis through the centre of Mos Espa, and inevitably, their cover is blown. Qui-Gon had been walking from one of Anakin's test runs for his upcoming pod race, and upon passing Watto's shop again, he knew someone was after the Jedi or Anakin, as he found the dealer was unconscious. Putting a hand on his lightsaber on his belt, he felt the darkness in the Zabrak in front of him and lunged towards him. Maul ignited his double-bladed lightsaber just in time to block the Jedi Master, whilst Plagueis had avoided the attention of the Jedi and was on the search for Anakin. The two duelists sparked the streets of the spaceport, 
until Plagueis' ship hovered above Maul, and they could both leave with Anakin's twin at his side. That is it for part 1 of What If Anakin Had A Twin. If you'd like to see a part 2 soon, please like this video, turn on that notification bell, click that subscribe button on this channel, as well as on my other channel What If Films. And as always, leave a comment on what if you'd all like to see next, and how I can improve my videos. Thank you all very much for watching, and see you next time.